Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Today I'll read from a book titled The One Being, The Walking Eye, edited by Diane Dufour, Dominique Paini and Roger Willems, and published by Le Ball in collaboration with Roma Publications. One day in 1999 in northeastern China, a 32-year-old man who had studied photography at an art school picked up a little amateur video camera and filmed, by himself for almost two years, the disappearance of China's largest metallurgical complex. The result was West of the Trucks, 2003, a masterly film that lasts nine hours, experienced by many of us as making the emergence of a filmmaker and of a unique way of embodying cinema. It was the beginning of the one being phenomenon. Since then, One Bing has been constantly with us, in 20 films made in the course of as many years, with humility and extraordinary determination, a monumental oeuvre has emerged. It is a body of work that encompasses, like two sides of the same coin, the anthropological films in which the filmmaker undertakes to follow the traces of those excluded from the Chinese economic miracle, and the historical films in which the words of the last survivors of the anti rightist uh, campaigns of Mao Zedong are collected and preserved. West of the Tracks was greeted with amazement on its release in France in 2004. Wang Bing filmed the deterioration and closure of the largest Chinese metallurgical complex. He explored the vast uh, deserted factories, the disappearing remnants of a declining industrial production, and the distress of unemployed workers still haunting the rusting ruins. The length of the film underlined the point. These nine hours of projection and thousands of hours of filming were necessary to be able to keep pace with the process of decomposition precipitated by the abandonment of these iron monuments. It was necessary, therefore, to film a great deal before everything disappeared, as if the speed of corrosion exceeded that of the sequence of cinematographic images. Beyond the social and anthropological statement it made, this film was a formal challenge, engaged with a conceptual endeavor that one might retrospectively include among the most performative part of contemporary art at the turn of the 21st century. One being revealed in real time the process of material and social disintegration at the dawn of the new century. A new way of seeing was born out of the aesthetic ambition of this debut work. The filmmaker captured at one and the same time the movements of history and the infinitesimal movements of the subject matter itself. He also revealed the chaos produced by the political, social and civilizational upheavals of China. The immensity of the territory demanded a dominant filming technique, the endless tracking shot. The choice of such a long duration conferred an experimental status on this masterwork, closer to Michael Snow's La Région Centrale in 1971 than to so many socially committed documentaries. Thus, West of the Tracks proved to be as much an artist's film as a work of cinema of the real. There is a certain excess in one being's work. It invalidates the criteria that traditionally define the documentary genre. More than 20 films in around 20 years, or almost one film per year. But is this fact even relevant in dealing with a body of work made up of time spans ranging from 125 minutes to almost 10 hours, depending on the film, and which gives the impression that the existence of humanity merges completely with the activity of the filmmaker? Wang Bing shares with the world his viewpoints not on the Chinese people, but on the Chinese peoples, describing a social and geocultural diversity that the unity imposed by ideology and autocratic will seeks to efface. If Wang Bing's films avoid any hint of voyeurism or of exploiting poverty, a certain mode of portrayal, apparently improvised, may well contribute to that. The shadowing, the ceaseless surveillance, the stubborn insistence on following right behind uh, his subjects. 
One being sticks to them like a leech, as one might say in describing this manner of filming where he stays on his subject's heels, following their wanderings and uh, perambulations. But because he exceeds the norms of direct cinema, of investigative activity, one being avoids the pitfalls of cinematic unworthiness. As has been recalled recently in a context of resurgent populism, the people do not exist. One Bing's cinema starts from this fact. It is impossible to portray a people whose diversity of language, ethnic origin and status is on a par with the greatest expanse of the country's territory. Nevertheless, One Bing's documentary writing is the result of a double gesture of both a geographer and anthropologist. He chooses to disperse his observation posts, to multiply, literally, his point of view from north to south and from east to west. Film after film, his monumental body of work accentuates distances, plumbs the depth of social gaps, underlines ethnic disparities. And even so, by the unprecedented length of his films and the multiplicity of stories he tells, one being fashions a whole people, a people in film. One Bing has offered one of the most remarkable contemporary cinematographic proposals, which consists of producing not long films, but an uninterrupted film. For him, it is less a matter of revealing or denouncing a reality than of depicting the coexistence of unique groups, preserving their irreducibility, their invincibility. This resistance to the dissolution of individuals or groups is translated to, to the scream in three figures – ruin, confinement and shadowing. It is by the choice of these motifs that one being undertakes his political filmmaking. It is from this aesthetic design that he draws intact the energy to conceive his films politically. At a time when the great philosophical systems and the ideological constructions of the 20th century have left only the wounds of totalitarian terror, the appearance of this filmmaker is a symptom. It renews in a different way than in the 1930s or 1960s a critical reflection on the relation between art and politics. A reflection made all the more necessary by the conflicts in the Middle East and the heating up of economic competition between the Chinese superpower and the United States, which has uh, rendered the Cold War a thing of the past. The political vocation of Wan Bing's uh, films is latent. He does not submit the capture of his images to any preconceived message that they are intended to illustrate. The meaning is brought out in the course of the act of filming, as the landscape and the characters develop before the lens of the camera. The film constructs, without haste, a vantage point on reality. By means of tireless advances in space, it imposes that unique tone that engenders the impossibility of anticipating the end of each tracking shot, or of predicting the moment when a still shot will come to an end. It is uh, this openness to the hazards of spatial and human realities that forms the basis, in one way, of uh, one being's ideological independence. Discrete editing reinforces the impression of an incision, of a sampling from a longer period of time. The lives of individuals and the course of repetitive collective situations have their origins before the filmed moment and last well beyond it. Hence, the sensation of an open, unlimited cinema, indifferent to the standards of the motion picture business and even to a viewer's usual capacity for concentration. However long they may seem, one being's films turn out to be but tiny extracts from what goes on and on. The fabrication of a history, called effective, be it written or filmed, involves reminding the reader or viewer that history continues outside of the momentary awareness one has of it. This is the mechanism of lucidity that one being calls for. 
The exhibition at the Le Bal will be up until October the 3rd, so if you're in Paris, don't miss it. As for the book at your local bookstore, thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one.